to this meeting of the Wooddale Community Development Commission. My name is Brad Kirish, and I am the chairman of the Wooddale Community Development Commission. <clears throat> Will the secretary please call the roll? Mr. Kirish. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Mr. Shamanek. Here. Mr. St. Marie is absent. Mr. Vant. Here. Mr. Woods. Here. And Mr. Damasco. Here. I declare a quorum present. <clears throat> uh, business items. I'll enter a motion to approve the meeting minutes from May 20th, 2019. So moved. Second. <clears throat> there being a motion and a second, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying nay. The motion carries. <clears throat> the minutes are approved. We have one public hearing scheduled for tonight. All testimony will be given under oath. At the hearing, there will be opportunity for the public to offer testimony and to comment. Following the public hearing, our deliberations will be open to the public in the sense that all are invited to listen and to watch. The public, however, may not speak during our deliberations. Our staff will provide a general description of the proposal, followed by their analysis. We ask that the applicant here tonight then give specific evidence to demonstrate that the proposal meets the standards of the approval for the request. The burden is on the applicant to prove the case. With respect to others who wish to speak, you may, be given the you may be given an opinion or present specific evidence as to why you believe that the applicant meets or fails to meet the standards for the request. Finally, we will strictly adhere to the schedule prepared for tonight's meeting. However, those wishing to submit evidence and testimony will be afforded sufficient time within which to do so. Whether you're a member of the public wishing to make a statement for the record, or a witness testifying on behalf of an applicant, you will be placed under oath and then begin by stating your name and address. You will be subject to the questions by the Community Development Commission and potential cross-examination by the applicant. To allow as many people as possible to be heard, we would request that your remarks be limited to five minutes. If additional time is needed, the hearing will be continued until the next available hearing date, and I will now call the matter before us this evening. Mr. Chairman, I believe we have preliminary matters uh, with Member Woods and Member Shenanick. Yes, we need to recuse myself from this. Okay. Yes, sir. I'd like to be recused also. Okay. Yes. Just, uh, just to keep everybody advised, whenever we have recusals, um, our standard procedure is that the members um, leave the dais, they can go sit in the audience. Um, but. Um, they can't remain on the dais because they're accusing themselves for participation in this public hearing. Oh. Sorry, I'm getting way too far ahead of myself. Okay. Where's my wallet? I don't even see it around today. Sarah And folks, just, just a matter of procedure. We have commenced uh, the hearing. Um, so we just ask that uh, when people present testimony, when staff presents testimony, and any of the members of the public that wish to present testimony, we just ask that you be courteous um, and, and allow for everybody to have their turn. Okay, under public hearing, case 2019-CDC-02. Is in regard to lot consolidation of three lots into one recorded lot at 131 through 133 Center Street and 140 Florina Court. Staff, would you please provide a summary of the request and indicate when notice of the hearing was published and whether you have the certificate of uh, publication from the newspaper? Would you raise your right hand, state your name and address, please? Goshe Pocheha, 404 North Wooddale Road, Wooddale, Illinois. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So I help do. you God. I do. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, in front of us we have uh, petition 2019 CDC 02. This petition is for a lot consolidation to consolidate three residential lots into one lot of record. And the subject sites are located at 131, 133 Central Street, and 140 Florina Court. The first slide that we have in front of us is just a general location map. Um, we see that um, oh, I'm sorry, my pointer is um, the site is uh, located just to the north of, of City Hall. 
Um, there's two parcels that are on Center Street and one parcel that's on Florina Court, and we see Wooddale Road just as a reference in terms of the general location of the site. Um, 140 Florina Court is uh, currently improved with a two-story brick residence. 131 Center Street uh, currently is improved with one-story um, frame residence. And 133 Center is currently a vacant lot. This is just sort of a general view of both of the lots um, on Center Street. Um, and what we see here is uh, this is the 140 Florina, the two-story residence that is um, to, be, to remain as part of the, the proposal. The 133 Center, as I, as I mentioned, is currently vacant, and this is the 131 one-story residence. Um, the petitioners are proposing to demolish this building um, after the lot consolidation. And the only other thing I did want to mention is there are two existing curb cuts on Center Street, so if the petition were to move forward, uh, those would have to be addressed uh, probably during the permitting uh, process. Um, this is the zoning map for uh, the subject sites. Um, they are highlighted in blue. As we can see, the lots are zoned R2, which is, stands for large lot single family. It is a uh, residential district. Um, as what we can see is that majority of the area throughout is also zoned residential. Most of it is R2. As I mentioned, we do have City Hall, um, which is zone C1 to the south, and then we've got R1 and R4. So majority of the surrounding area would be residential uh, with generally similarly sized lots and the streets do represent more of a, a grid network. Just as a point of reference, these are photos uh, of Center Street. This is looking north and just to the west of the subject property. And as you can see, it's, most of the lots are improved with single family residences. This is the other side of Center Street that's looking north, but then to the east of the subject sites. The proposed improvements following the lot consolidation um, include, as I mentioned, demolition of the single family home that's on 131 uh, Center Street, and also addition of a number of accessory structures and uses for the residential lot. Um, what we see on this side is actually a proposed site plan, but due to the size, I broke it up into two separate slides that we'll see in a second, just so we're able to see the improvements a little bit better. So this is a look at the north portion, 140 Florina Court. We do have the existing two-story uh, brick residence that will remain. What will be added is a, the patio is proposed to be enlarged and pergola built over it. There is a pool with a pool deck that's proposed. We have a shed or a sort of like a shed or a building to contain the pool equipment. One thing of note is the proposed location of the shed is actually in an easement. Mm -hmm. um, what could happen technically per our UDO requirements is the property owners could request and potentially be granted permission from the utility companies and from the city to be able to build the structure in an easement. If that would not, if there are utilities underneath or if the utility companies don't allow it, then the location of this would have to be changed because generally structures are not permitted in easements. And we also have, and I apologize, the text is, is not very readable. This is a playground. It's actually an existing playground that's on the side, but as part of the proposal, the location will change slightly. It will be moved up a little bit to the south. And this is a look at the other side of the proposed site plan. We have 131, 133 Center Street. And what we see here is a, a basketball court then a solid fence, a six-foot six privacy fence to be surrounding the property. This will be very similar to the existing fence that's on site. And we also have a rain garden that is proposed as a stormwater management system for this site because of the total number of improvements um, require some sort of stormwater management system to be installed. Um, looking at our comprehensive plan, the future land use map designates this area as single family residential. The intent of this particular category is to maintain uh, the established pattern 
of single family development with similar home and lot sizes on a grid st street network. So what we see here is that uh, the proposal doesn't necessarily meet the idea that those would be a similarly sized lot sizes. Moving forward, uh, there's a couple goals um, from the comprehensive plan where this proposal does not align with. Uh, more specifically, the comprehensive plan does address um, future land development. Um, it's addressed in a couple places that generally the future development would see infill construction where we would see larger homes on small, smaller lots and the street grid system. Um, we also have the goal to enhance the curb appeal and improve pedestrian comfort. This particular proposal um, consolidation um, would create a through lot or a lot that has two frontages. And the main problem is that the fenced in backyard would be facing a street that already has residences that are um, facing that street. So essentially we would have a number of single family homes and then somebody's backyard and then the single family homes would continue. Moving to the um, unified development ordinance as part of the review, we do have allowable uses. So as I mentioned earlier, the subject sites are zoned R2, which is um, large single family uh, residential. The intent of this district is to provide and maintain area for development of low density single family residences generally on uniform lots. So although the proposal does meet the intent of a low density residential, once again, we're coming across the, the non-uniform lot that doesn't necessarily fit within the district. A little bit more uh, in terms of the UDO, I did mention the double, uh, the double frontage lot, or sometimes it's called a through lot. It's the idea, and it's actually specifically defined in our UDO as a lot which has its rear and front yard bordering on a street. So we do have two streets um, in the front and in the back. Uh, per definition of the rear yard, it's considered any of the open space that's behind the rear wall of the structure all the way to the rear lot line. So, so in this case, anything that is behind the structure, what we have highlighted here in green, would be considered a uh, rear yard. Um, generally, in R2, the rear yard setback is 30 feet, but what we do have here is an established 25 foot setback for the residential properties that are facing Center Street, so there's a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of the required setbacks. Moving forward with the UDO, we do have a couple sections that generally speak about uh, development review procedures. Uh, the main purpose uh, it would be to prevent poorly designed sites, to support improvements that promote safety and convenience for the public, and we have preserved the value of surrounding property. There's another section uh, that actually starts off our UDO that talks about the purpose and intent of the regulations that are in the UDO. And they too do talk about uh, protecting residential character, providing orderly development, enhancing the aesthetics value, and then uh, providing remedy for low-grade subdivisions of land that could have happened in the past. So um, we do believe that double frontage lot are considered uh, poor planning practices, mainly because they generally tend to have a negative effect on the already established residential character of the street. In this case, it would be on Center Street. Um, there are potential for, for maintenance issues in the future, uh, generally because people are kind of used to their backyards and there will be area that's fenced outside of the backyard. So it could be just potential in the, in the future because everything's sort of outside of the fence line, but it's still within the property line. And finally, for findings of fact, um, the, the CDC may recommend denial. Sir, sir, excuse me. While staff is presenting, I just ask you to be courteous. Thank you. Um, so the, in terms of findings of facts, um, CDC uh, may recommend denial of a lot consolidation if it makes findings of the following standards. So we do have four standards, and we believe that the petition doesn't meet, uh, actually meets the first and the last standards because it's not consistent with the UDO and it doesn't meet the comprehensive plan. I was just going to summarize, if that's okay. Marilyn, would you like to oh, swim sorry. in? Oh, sorry. Busy. Um, 
Raise your right hand and state your name and address, please. Edmund Cage, 204 West Bloomingdale Road, Itasca. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. So just um, uh, Gosha ran through all of the technical aspects of the application. Um, really um, kind of get to the, uh, the summary, which you know, staff, staff's job is to evaluate each application per the code and whether it meets the code requirements or not. Um, staff does not believe this application uh, meets the code. We've informed the applicant of this. Um, it is also not consistent with our recently adopted uh, comprehensive plan, which was uh, adopted last year. Um, and uh, we're recommending denial. Um, there are a couple of other issues that relate to this. There's one is the code element. Uh, two, we would be creating a, a, a somewhat of a zoning oddity, uh, which you would have front yards along Center Street uh, with one rear yard. So that's not typically what you would find um, uh, in, a, in a uniform uh, R2 zoning district. I think in other communities where you see this, it's along a main thoroughfare and you have through lots that back to the main, uh, to the main road and you would have a fence that runs the entire length. So all the lots would be through lots rather than one or two in this case. And then the last aspect is this property has been a property maintenance issue. Um, this was the case last year and the city maintained it. Um, and as it stands right now, it's in violation of the long grass weed ordinance. So with that, I'll stop talking and let the deliberations and public testimony begin. Thank you. Okay, um, does any member of the community development commission have any questions for staff? Thank you. Do I need to repeat that or was there a lot? Okay. Um, I, I just, I guess I did have one question. Do we have any other lots in the city that have um, the same type of configuration? Maybe not the L, but you know, a pass through where you have a f backyard on a front street? Um, none that spring to mind. Um, the ones that I'm very familiar with, we, um, and that we've just dealt with recently in terms of fences or the, the corner lots that have the two, essentially two front yards. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to imagine or trying to think of a recent one that has a through lot and I, none spring to mind. That doesn't mean that there aren't any. It's just that I can't think of one established one. The ones we've had problems with in terms of fences, and I know we've discussed it here with a text amendment have been the two front yards on a corner lot. So. Okay, I, I had just one other follow up. Um, it may have been on here, I just, I didn't see it. Was there any um, uh, proposed lighting like throughout the back, like on the courts and all that stuff? I and mean, I'm just kind of wondering, is this gonna be a, a nighttime rec center or something like that kind of set up? I, I don't mean to offend, I'm just asking the question because it didn't appear very clear to me. Yes, so the original proposals that were submitted to the city did include lighting of the court. Mm -hmm. um, because we did an initial review of the UDO requirements and we do have a specific, specific section, sections that address lighting, also in residential districts, the proposed lighting did not meet the code requirements and the petitioners chose to remove it from the proposal. Okay. Um, we do have a note in our memo where we do suggest that if the lighting were ever to be added at a future date, it will have to be evaluated based on the UDO requirements. Uh, would the applicant like to give a presentation or provide additional information and remind you that uh, anyone that will be making statements on behalf of the applicant must be sworn in. So please stand to be placed under oath if you'd like to do so. Uh, the F or, no, I'm, this is the applicant. Would you raise your right hand, state your name and address, please. Benjamin Berkey, 625 West Melrose Street, Chicago, Illinois. Berkey? B-I-R-K-E-Y. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you guys? I do. Um, so I just want to speak a little bit. Um, I'm working with Stephen Rodriguez on this um, proposed lot consolidation. Um, Gosha did a pretty good job of you know, detailing all the items that we're going through with this lot consolidation. 
but I just did want to say that um, the current property or the current house on um, 131 Center Street, it's currently a condemned house, so it's an unlivable condition. Um, prior to Ms. Rodriguez purchasing the property, it was overgrown with weeds, you know, poorly maintained. So I think this would be an improvement to the lot. I think to say otherwise, you know, it's, um, it's not in great condition. Um, we've made every effort to conform with the UDO, and if this goes through, we will, you know, continue to do so. Um, so I just do want to say that this would be an improvement despite having a rear yard on Center Street. Um, currently, the lot is, you know, unlivable conditions at this point. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot more to add to that, but um, I guess if you have any questions, I can answer those. Does anyone on the commission have any questions for the applicant? No? Does staff would like to make any contributions to that? Um, yes, just a, a point of clarification. The, uh, the building on Center Street is not condemned. It is not, the water has been turned off. So typically the city puts a non-habitable sticker on a building when the water is turned off. Obviously the, um, the current owner purchased it, obviously isn't using the water. So it's, it's not condemned. It's just the water's been shut off, which requires the sticker. Just a clarification. And just a, a, a legal point um, so that everybody, all the members know, um, when you purchase a property, uh, even though it may be uninhabitable, uh, you're still required to maintain that property under the city code. Mm -hmm. So I um, just wanted to make that legal point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Is there any member of the general public in attendance who wishes to make a comment or has a question regarding this request? If so, please stand to be placed under oath. Uh, you state your name, please, and address. Carl Permanian, uh, 122 Florina Court. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Okay, we have a couple issues here. Looking at this development, I was the owner of five lots that were up to his property, and then this was another plan development. There's a swale easement here that maybe you haven't gone into your archives and looked for it, but um, I don't think he could put a shed here because of the swale, and somehow you'd have to reconfigure the property to encompass that swale because at the far end, west end, of all these lots, there's a retention pond. Okay. That retention pond is to hold all the water starting from Wooddale Road going west to the back of all these homes. So each one of these homes, and I don't know if you people are enforcing it, when they build their home, there's a certain area that has to be dedicated for the swale of the rainwater. We have a two, a, about a three-foot retaining wall that the village people made us put up because they feared that the wall, because we're so much higher than this gentleman and these people, if you look at the, uh, the elevations of the properties, Florida Court is four feet higher than the back of these properties. So that means there's a tremendous amount of water that swales down between these houses and then it's supposed to go in this way. <clears throat> what happened prior to Steve buying a home, unbeknown to you people, that person put in a four inch or a six inch pipe, which he should have never done. So if you go and dig this up, you're gonna see there's a four inch or a six inch pipe that he put in to omit the swale, which, which shouldn't have been allowed to be done. So that's one contention. Now, if he puts a barricade fence up here, where the retaining wall is, there's at least one to two feet of property that belongs to 128 and 122 Florina that would now become a void. And between the barricade and the void and a four foot drop, you're gonna have weeds, trees, debris, or whatever. The solution would be for the homeowners is to backfill that in. If they backfill that in, 
eventually the weight from the backfill is going to collapse that barricade fence. So what I would suggest to Steve is I would put an ornamental fence here. You could put your barricade fence here. You could put your barricade fence here. To not infringe on these people, I would extend the barricade fence just beyond this tennis court and then put an ornamental fence there. It would add a little bit of ambience to the property. But what you have to remember is there's water retention swales that are dedicated. And they're, if you look in the archives of the developed properties, you're going to see that swale has to stay there. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, can you stay there for a second in case any, uh, does anyone on the committee have any questions for? Oh, for me? Yes. Oh. Anyone? No? There's also an easement there. There's a, a utility easement that right now, um, I'm not quite sure it does. It stops, it stops by Steve because what I try to do is, the overhead lines that are there now only feed this house and this house. And there's a pole here, overhead lines go down on the ground, overhead lines start again back here. So when I tried to talk to your building department and your commissioner people and said, you know, it would behoove you to put this all on the ground, take out all this overhead, which would admit the outages they always incur when the tree limbs break the wires, and feed these two homes on the ground with ComEd. Enforce it. Make ComEd do it. They never want to do it. So what you have is, back, back in here you have ugly overhead lines, and just them two homes <coughs> being fed with a pole here and a pole here. Okay. Anyone else have any? Go ahead. I've got a, you know, you seem very knowledgeable, and thank you for your knowledge, but you know, obviously you've never dealt with Commonwealth Edison. I would say what? You've never dealt with Commonwealth Edison. I've been elected contractor for 54 years. Well, I'll tell you what, this <laughs> village has dealt with Commonwealth Edison. Well, here's, for, here's how you, ex excuse here, go ahead. Here's how you city fathers have to deal with ComEd. You can't let them always take the upper hand of your village or your city. Okay. This is your town. You can tell them what you want and what you'll approve. But you, you have to carry a hard line sometimes. Yeah. You know, I'll be honest with you. If, if, if everything was underground and the overhead lines went away, you wouldn't have the outages you have. If you took these residential developments and you put compartmental transformers at that end, and this end of the property lines in all your towns, you'd never see these homes lose power. And all you have to do is sit down with ComEd and say, this is how we want to do it. And once that's proposed, the uh, Comcast people, the AT&T people will all go along in the underground. You know, you do it on your newer developments and to stop your outages that you have in these older developments, you know, and it, but the, the thing of it does, it eliminates jobs. I mean, that's the only solution I can come up with, why ComEd would want to keep overhead lines and transformers and poles, which are so disesthetically pleasing for communities is beyond me. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the general public in attendance that would like to make comment and step forward? Yeah, I would. Please go to the podium, state your name. Uh, Jerry Saviano. Excuse me, would you raise your right hand, please? Yeah. And state your name and address. 128 Florina Court. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you. Yes, I do. Um, uh, Steve is my neighbor, and he is an excellent neighbor. N nice family, nice kids. Um, my only objection, I have no objection for him improving what he's trying to do, okay? It's a big undertaking. My only uh, problem is um, I live over here, okay? And um, that wall is 
fine, well, it's not fine, really. I, believe, I, I agree with Carl what it should be, but I want to go a further because my backyard and deck and everything will be facing you guys, the parking lot, okay? Which uh, is an eyesore. For me, it's an eyesore, okay? I used to have trees there. Uh, it was beautiful. Uh, I would like to see trees there put back, okay? If that's possible. Um, the only problem else I have is that, um, like you said earlier, with the basketball courts, I don't know if that's going to be at night, it's going to be loud, if it's going to be, you know, it's, 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 a ba it's a basketball game. And, of course, the lights. I don't know what Steve proposes to do at night there or have tournaments. I don't know, Steve. Okay, if it's just for your kids, I don't know. But, um, again, I have no problem with Steve. Great family. Uh, I just would like to see if this is passed, trees instead of a fence in the back. Thank well, you. the swimming pool is on the other side, am I correct? Well, the whole, the whole area. Hold on, hold on, let me, let me, let me, we just have to do one at a time. Okay. Are you finished, sir, or do you have money? Well, are you, is there an answer to the, to the fence? It has to be a fence? That's it has correct. to be a fence. Yes. And trees? Well, trees would not be sufficient uh, fencing material for the, the pool. So uh, trees themselves or vegetation would not meet the building code requirements. You mean you couldn't put a fence and trees there? No, you, could, you definitely could do both because okay. it would be just considered landscaping. Okay. Yes, but the, the trees themselves would not be sufficient for a fencing requirement. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions for this witness from the commission? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else from the general public? Your name and address, please. My name is Karen Krebosh. I'm at 526 Forest View in Elk Grove. Would you spell your last name? It's K-R-E, B as in boy, A-S-C-H. Do you swear, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. So help me God. Yes. Um, I grew up on uh, 158 Center Street, which is right here. My parents still live there. So I'd like to present center street here. Um, I guess my question to the people that live on Florina, would you like to be neighbors to a basketball court? Would you like a basketball court right next to you? I would say no, we would not. Coming down the street looking at a basketball court and a, a fence, I think would be a problem for especially the folks that uh, flank that for property purposes, right? Uh, so I just wanted to be known that I think that Center Street people would, would be an injustice to them. Thank you. Does anyone else from the commission have a question for the witness? No? Is there another witness that would like to come forward? That was my daughter, who was just speaking. And this whole thing Excuse me, seems Mr. like it's... Mr. Sir? Sir, yes. do you have the same last name? Yes. Would you raise your right hand, please, and state your name and address? Three lines, yes. On 58 Center Street, and I have a major objection to this whole do thing. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you. This whole thing is way out of line. Uh, the fence is going to be like we're up on Center Street. It's like we're on the back of a business if you're going to put a six foot high fence. Uh, why not put it the other way around? This has been an excellent neighborhood for me for 55 years. And the way it's going, it's going to be more like an industry on Center Street. Now, I don't know what the plans are for the city, but it's not going to blend in. It's not going to look like a, a residential street. It's going to look more like a business with a, a six-foot high fence. And uh, the noise pollution, light pollution from lights, 
yelling, and I have the pool behind me now, and that's a pain because of the noise. I don't want it on the other side of me too. So that's basically yeah. Is there any question for the witness from the commission? No? Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward? And would you raise your right hand, state your name and address, please? Stephen Rodriguez, 140 Florina Court. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you guys? Yes. Um, prior to me uh, purchasing these properties, I just want to say when we, me and my wife and my kids originally moved to Florina Street, uh, 133 was nothing but trees. And me and my wife would, I would talk to my wife and be like, man, it would be really cool if this property behind us became for sale. And I never had any interest in 131. It was 133 and I was at work one day and my wife called me and she said, babe, the properties behind us, the property behind us became for sale. And I was like, really? And she said, yes, there's a sign. So uh, she took the number, we called in. They, uh, they told us that it is a uh, double lot. They're not being sold individually, which kind of was not what we wanted, but we were still interested. And uh, prior to me purchasing them, I contacted the city and have it all in writing. I went back and forth with the, the city person at the time, told them what my plan was prior to purchasing the property. And they said that it would not be a problem. Went back and forth, and I made it clear. I sent multiple emails after they told me this, just saying, I just want to confirm again. My plan is to put a swimming pool in my yard. My plan is to put a basketball court on one of the properties in the back. And they said, based on the area, as long as you got all three lot uh, con consolidated to one lot, it wouldn't be a problem. I went forward, purchased both lots, contract, uh, contracted my uh, architects. They came up with the design, and here we are. And I understand there's a process. I definitely was not expecting this. <laughs> and I understand it is a process, but I just wanted to uh, let you guys know how this all came about. I have a 12-year-old son that plays uh, competitive basketball. He's getting ready for, uh, for high school. I have a three-year-old son that is going to play sports as well. And I have a five-year-old daughter that's currently playing. I coach in Wooddale and Itasca. Um, I, I was an athlete myself growing up, and this was just always like an ideal situation for me, kind of like a, a dream to, to have some type of swimming pool as, along with a recreational area for my kids. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, this is not, I didn't buy this and just came up with this crazy idea. I made sure that this was all clear, and I have evidence that it was clear by the city person that is no longer here. And I purchased these properties uh, based on that. And that's all I have. Uh, does anyone from the commission have questions for the applicant? I have a question. Yes. If you're denied, okay. you own the property, what are you going to do with those lots? What are, your, what are your other alternatives? I don't know. Um, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do. If anything, I'm probably going to uh, rehab the house and sell it. And I'll probably put a property on 133 and sell it. And I'm probably going to sell 142 and leave. That would be the plan. OK, thank you. Is there any other questions? No? Thank you very much. <clears throat> At this point, is there anyone else that would like to come forward, please? Raise your right hand and state your name and address, please. Jeannie Gratzel, G R A T Z L, 146 West Center Street. One. 146. 46. Thank you. 
Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. I don't really have any statement. I just really have some questions. I really feel for after hearing what you said, that you were like, said, yeah, you can do all this. I feel bad about that. My only concern is I'm across the street. I'm really worried about flooding. We have such a flooding problem in Wooddale. And I know when we built a garage, it was a big deal about any concrete and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just really worried about any flooding that would start affecting Center Street. And then my other question was, if you don't, if they don't let you do that, what's going to happen to those two lots? Are two more homes going to go up or what? That was, but I think the flooding is my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, I don't know, has the city looked into that? Like, you may get a lot, you know? So I can briefly speak through that. So as part of the uh, the public hearing process, our city engineer did take a, just an initial look, because obviously this is just a proposal right now. So the rain garden is being proposed as the stormwater management system uh, on site. Depending on the amount of the actual improvements, there's, there's different thresholds that need to be met. So the idea is that the stormwater management system that the applicant is proposing would be the rain garden. There would be a note recorded on the title to the property for something that, like that to be maintained over time. But the actual engineering review would take place once the proposal uh, goes through permitting process. So it's only initial engineering, but because of the number of improvements and the actual um, square footage of the area that will be improved, it will go through full engineering review. So definitely stormwater management will be something that the city engineer looks at. Whoever talked about the swing line kind of made me a little nervous too. Gotcha. And that's what, I, and just for clarification, if I may add, for the, the shed, we did acknowledge that it's placed in the easement. We didn't necessarily look at what the specific easement language says, but if there's specific um, language that talks about drainage, then obviously a structure would not be permitted in it. But for something like this, I think there, there's a couple other options where it could be relocated. So that's why it's something, once again, that would be addressed if the project moves to permitting process. And that at that point, we specifically look at what the easements are, and it's not just the city, it would be all the utility companies and, and the city that would have to sign off on it prior to uh, moving forward with the permit. So it would be sort of handled through the permitting process. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to come forward? No? Can we do twice, sir? Please. There, there's just one thing I want to emphasize, and I mean, I, Steve is a very good neighbor, okay? But, but we, we can't lose the picture. <coughs> what we've got to remember is we're four feet higher than we are here. Right now, he's got a swale here. We've got one here. All these homes have them here. There's a swale that goes here. And all that water, so that these people, this lady doesn't flood, the swale's going to have to be maintained, whether he does it with a 24-inch pipe or whatever, which will determine uh, the gallons per minute water flow that happens on a great downpour. They'll have to improve this piece here so that the water can continue to go and not impact this here. If you don't do that, all that water is going to come all the way down the earth. Now, we talked about a garden that's going here. But that doesn't address the elevations. You gotta look at the elevations. The elevations here versus the elevations here to see where you're at so that you can maintain the water flow and not prevent flooding. That's why that retention pond is way back at the west end of all these lots. And every one of these homes, I don't know if you're enforcing it, are, are to have a swale so it doesn't impact these homes. That's why we, we had to build it. We have a 24-inch, 20, 30-inch sewer line that runs 180 feet behind these two properties to handle the storm water from the properties east of us. And like I said, when this architect puts a shovel to the ground, he's going to find out that the people prior to Steve went and put a pipe in there, which they should have never done, okay, which is supposed to handle the water. So
So you really have to emphasize the diversion of the water from here to here because the elevation is so different. Any other questions? No? I got I got one other question. The only thing that really bothers me is on Sunday. George, George, just make sure you get oh, I gotta turn my microphone on. The only thing on Center Street, there's going to be a 177-foot fence, six foot high. It's a lot of fence. I could take one more at this time. Do all right. Do both. Okay. Please. I'll take Please go ahead, Ed. Um, reference was made earlier to prior contacts um, that it would be approved with a lot of consolidation. This is the lot of consolidation. This is the process tonight. So I know the applicant did talk to a prior em uh, employee of the city. He said there was a process. This is the process right now. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you want to testify? Okay. Please And would you raise your right hand and state your name and address, please? Michelle Simonia, 625 West Melrose Street, Chicago, Illinois. Um, we Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. We spoke with Mo Khan, and he did not raise any concerns with the improvements that were being um, proposed. That's all I want to add. Ed, please. Again, we have a number of conversations. I know Mr. Khan spoke to the applicant. There is a process. This is the process. I know the applicant's been diligently working on this for some time, so it's, you know, there's, there's not a dispute of whether the applicant contacted the city at all. I know Mr. Khan talked to Mr. Rodriguez and uh, some of his representatives, so this is the process. So I get asked a number of times and, you know, uh, during a week, would this process work? Yes, if it meets A, B, and C, the criteria. And that's exactly why we're here this evening. Mm -hmm. So if the criteria is met, it goes through a process. That's why we're here. That's why we have the public testimony, um, because it's a public hearing. Um, that's exactly why we're here. So. The applicant did do his homework. He was diligent. He did talk to the city. Um, he did talk to Mr. Khan a number of times. And just, and I know more recently with Ms. Chrissy, had spoken to the representative of the applicant and stated it very clearly that the city staff would not support it because it doesn't meet our criteria in the code. But the reason for that is we have a code. That's our job to illustrate to the public and to the uh, uh, the CDC what the code is and that's why we have a CDC we have a commission of recommendation and then it goes to City Council and it works its way through the process so everybody has an opportunity to weigh in and to give their opinion so thank you with all of Mo Khan's experience he should have let us know that this would be the likely outcome please go in okay so uh, I believe on the same token I believe Mr. Khan it indicated to you that the grass and the weeds need cutting on the property, and still to this date, it is not. Last year, I know because I authorized it, the city maintained this property. Mr. Khan did notify the property owner and other people involved that it was in violation. That's a separate concern. That's, okay. that's maintenance. Yes. And the maintenance to date, right now, is not being maintained. So that's over a year. We're waiting so, for an outcome on this okay. decision. Thank you. <clears throat> but this hearing tonight is for the lot consolidation, correct? Correct. So that's what we're looking at. Um, but the lot consolidation is also based on whether you're going to then follow through and 
go through with all your proposed renovations. Are those, as far as the city's concerned, two different or is it one combined all together? I think the, the lack consolidation is the actual purpose of the public hearing. But because we know what the intent is behind the public hearing, that's why it was presented as part of this petition. Okay. Thank you. Is there any uh, additional questions by the commission? No? Okay. Um, having no additional testimony, I'll now close the public hearing for case number 2019-CDC-02. We'll now proceed into the deliberation of the merits of this request. Mr. Chairman, if I may just make a couple procedural points on the standards here. Uh, we do have standards for uh, a denial of a lot consolidation, and um, uh, city staff has, has gone through some of the reasons why they believe a denial is appropriate according to the standards. Um, and the one uh, standard in particular is whether the, the application conforms with the comprehensive plan, the official map, uh, the UDO, city ordinance, general city ordinances, or established planning and development policies of the city. Um, my understanding of staff's presentation tonight is uh, the, the main issue here is with the comprehensive plan with the uniformity of lot size um, and uh, at least it's staff's view that this particular consolidation doesn't comport with the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure you knew, you had a good understanding of what staff was saying here. Um, mm -hmm. And then this is the time where uh, you have the opportunity to deliberate amongst yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, the public hearing is now closed, so questioning is over a of staff and the applicant that um, you may deliver right now. Any input? No. No. Okay, so if there's no further discussion, um, typically what we do is we do a motion based off of staff recommendation. Yes. Uh, you, you do not have to vote in favor of it. You can vote against it. Um, but staff is recommending a denial. So the, the motion that I'm going to propose, uh, if you vote yes, would be a denial of the lot consolidation or the applicant's proposal. Um, the UDO is specific about what needs to be in that motion. So that's why I'm giving you a proposed motion. Um, again, if you vote yes, that means you will be voting to recommend denial. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So here is the proposed motion. If you have any questions after I uh, read this proposed motion, please ask. The proposed motion is based on the submitted petition and the testimony presented. The proposed lot consolidation meets the standards for denial in that it's not consistent with the UDO and comprehensive plan for the reasons set forth in the staff memo. And I therefore move that the Community Development Commission adopt the findings of fact included within the staff memo as the findings of the Community Development Condition and recommend to the City Council denial of the requested lot consolidation in case number 2019 CDC 02. So that is the proposed motion. We just need somebody to say so move. So moved. Okay. Mr. Was that you, Mr. Vant? Yes. Sir. Thank you. And a second, please. Mr. Peterson. Mr. Peterson. Okay. You want to roll, don't you? Yes. Uh, and there, at this point, whenever a motion's been made, there's yep. further opportunity for discussion. So, if there's any further discussion. There being a motion to recommend <coughs> the uh, denial and a second made. Will the secretary please call the roll? As a reminder, a yes vote will be to recommend uh, denial and a no vote will be recommended to approve. Mr. De uh, Damasco. Yes vote. Mr. Carriage. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Shaman, oh, Mr. Shamana can't vote. 
and Mr. Vant. Yes. Motion carried to deny. Okay, the motion to recommend denial proposed lot consolidation 131 through 133 Center Street and 144 in a court uh, road fails um, on the motion to carry. So uh, that'll so be the end of it. Just so that you know procedurally what the commission has done as they have voted to deny, that will go up as a recommendation to the city council. And the city council is the body that has the final say or the final decision making. So just know that this is this is a, just a recommendation, and there's an additional step. And Bosha, I don't know if you want. To, do you have dates on on those things? Unfortunately, I don't have it in front of me. I think I may have emailed you the some a couple of dates next month. So I think we're July 11th, 11th, 11th. There we go. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to our staff liaison report. Uh, is there any report from the staff? Oh, excuse me. If I can ask Mr. Woods and Mr. Shimonic to please rejoin. Just can we, can we ask that? Thank you. Please go ahead. More as a staff liaison report, it's just um, more of an update of items that are coming before you guys. We have um, an application for a text amendment um, that will be coming to you that's uh, up in the Thorndale Corridor. Uh, we have rumors that we'll have a big application. Um, and this is just a rumor until I see the application, but along the lines of Washington Street, but over on Route 83. Um, so don't worry, guys. You guys are, you guys are going to be busy, as will we. So, so when we, do I plan vacation? Um, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> when, it, when it warms up. All right. There you go. Yeah. Hey, real quick, Ed, can we have a specific update on the GW properties for the gas station and the Starbucks and the... Absolutely. So, um, not meaning to speak ill of anyone, uh, inclusive of uh, the city, uh, my department. Um, <laughs> the applicants run into a few scheduling errors. Um, the, the project's still going forward. We're hoping to issue the permit this week. There's been a couple of snafus dealing with um, where it's situated on the corner. They have to deal with DuPage County and they have to deal with IDOT, uh, which can be challenging. Um, I think we would probably all take um, a little bit of guilt for the project taking longer in terms of the permit issuance, uh, but I'm hoping to have good news on it this week because I know they are desperate to start construction, as are we, and we're just getting to that point, hopefully this week. Thank you. Good question. And Great. Woodale Row, HFC? Uh, HSBC, they have their demolition permit. That one actually is moving ahead fairly quickly. Uh, I think you can all see the activities going there. Uh, that's been going on, obviously a large site, 22, 23 acres. Um, the reason they're not uh, demolishing the property right away, uh, we're utilizing it with agreement with the new owner for training for the fire district and the police department and the SWAT team, which they will also be using the Washington Street, uh, assuming that that project is approved for the same purposes. So if there's a delay, the delay is on our end, not the applicant to make sure that we have opportunities for training, which the applicant on both projects has been very accommodating of the city and our departments. Um, but I, I would imagine um, you've seen HSBC, the trees unfortunately have come down that were in the way of the oh, building. Yeah. Um, once the training is up, the building will come down fairly quickly and you'll see activity there this year for sure. Okay. okay. And I have one more question. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it or not, but the old Reedy like Electric, <laughs> the old Reedy Electric, and the two buildings next door. Um, the I can say something about it. The plan is for demolition, and I know the desire is for demolition of those buildings. Um, 
prior to the holiday, July 4th. So I know that they were cleaning up the, um, there were some issues with the properties. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, there was some cleanups and working with the EPA, but those buildings will come down, we're hoping, in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, are there any plans for that site? Uh, unfortunately, that's the part I can't talk about. There you go. There you <laughs> Sorry. I, I thought I'd get away with that one. <laughs> Um, there, there's been some discussions, and I would hope to be back here and to give you some good news on that. So the first part is city owns the property, the buildings are coming down, really clearing the way for a new development, uh, and hopefully that is forthcoming. So maybe, uh, where are we, June? Maybe in August. Is there any scheduled zoning changes now? Uh, not at this time, no, it's, it's, um, I can't remember, I think it's C3, um, and it really depends on the user, um, but C3 does accommodate a number of uses. Really the, the question is what kind of use, is there a drive-through or is it a different kind of use that doesn't require a drive-through? Um, my guess is because of the size of the property, it's not that huge, that whoever would redevelop it would probably need some kind of setback relief, which means that it would come to you guys for a variance of some sort. So I, I'm sure you guys will be seeing it, whether it's a drive-through, whether it's a variance, or whether it's done as a PUD, something like that. So you guys will see it, don't worry. We have enough tobacco stores. That is, that, don't worry, that's not on our list. <laughs> All right, um, that being the end of our commentary and questions, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Roll call, please. Mr. Jamasco. Four. Mr. Carriage. Yes. Pardon me, Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Shimana. Yes. Mr. Saint uh, Mr. Van. Yes. And Mr. Woods. Yes. So moved. Meeting's closed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.